A story out yesterday, um, which uh, we picked up here at BBC T, is that global oil consumption is likely to peak in the late 2030s, according to forecasts published by BP. Now, currently, as, the, as a planet, we consume an amazing amount of oil. 100 million barrels of oil every day. Now, BP Experts Renewables Energy is the fastest growing fuel source increased by fivefold by 2040, they expect. So what does it mean for jobs in our region? What does it mean for money coming out of our pockets here in Teesside, County Durham and North Yorkshire? Well, I spoke to Steve Irwin, who's the trading director of Portland. The numbers that BP have produced... They're a selection of scenarios. So it's not that they're saying, you know, it's definitely going to, this is our prediction for the future. They're saying in a most likely scenario, it'll peak about 2030 and then level off. But there's a whole raft of things that we can do now that will have a massive impact on whether or not this scenario plays out. Um, but if we do see um, a oil supply peak in 2030, um, I don't think it'll be a massive impact for the oil industry as a whole because we're still going to be pumping more oil then than we are now. The amount of oil that's coming out of the US is increasing, so that's keeping a lid on prices. But because there's more oil coming out of the US, OPEC have cut back the amount that they produce and, and take to market. So that's what's led to the rise in prices that we've seen at the pumps over the last year and a half. On a local level, how will it affect us over the next few years, knowing that this is going to plateau out? There's probably going to be less investment, certainly in high-cost producing regions, and unfortunately the North Sea is a relatively high-cost producing region. Um, so we're not going to see the kind of growth. At, at, perhaps, I mean, Aberdeen is certainly not local to the Tees area, but you know, there's a lot of people from our people work up there, don't they? Absolutely, and and the skills that we have from the Tees area are, is easily migratable to services related to the oil industry, and so we will see a reduction in these jobs locally. Um, hopefully, we'll see new um, industries come along that will require these these sorts of roles, such as maintaining wind farms offshore and things like that. So. You know, we will find new jobs coming along to replace um, the lost uh, oil growth that we expect to see from 2030 onwards. This is really the, a, a good uh, news story for the region in that we, we are seeing a shift in the actual energy mix over the next 20, 30 years. And renewables are going to become a much, much bigger part of the of the global energy mix. So we're going to see more jobs required for renewables. Wind is certainly going to be one of those areas, but solar as well. And the northeast is typically, if, if you look at the UK as a whole, the northeast has lower employment costs because we typically have more unemployment, which is not a great thing. But that might attract uh, more manufacturing uh, jobs in the renewable sectors. Um, if they're going to locate anywhere in the UK. And, I mean, obviously we don't know what on earth is happening with Brexit, but if we can get some jobs on the back of uh, good trade deals after Brexit, then the North East might really benefit from that. In your experience, can renewables and the oil industry work together hand in hand, or does it have to be one or the other? They can work hand in hand, and you, and you see big investments from oil companies in, in the renewable sector. I think all oil companies would be, would be rather foolish if they thought that oil is going to last forever. There will come a point at which oil will run out. I don't think that will be in my lifetime, I would say. There certainly will come, an oil, uh, come a point when you can't keep burning unsustainable fuels. So we have to make a move to sustainable fuels at some point. So it's not all companies being like the turkey voting for Christmas, it's they're looking to what their next generation of performance will be. This is the whole point of the BP Energy Outlook. They are trying to map the uncertainties in the future and they're trying to look at what the different energy mixes might look like and whether or not they have a robust business in each of the scenarios that they map out. And if there is any particular scenario that could impact BP adversely, you know, maybe even put them out of business, they need to make plans for that now. And obviously, BP being such a big behemoth of a, of a company, it's going to take them 20 years to adjust to possible markets that, that we might see emerge in, in that sort of time frame. I'm going to put you on the spot now. Trimmed and ladder, uh, will I be paying more for my energy in 20 years' time than I am now? Yes, absolutely. 
without without a shadow of a doubt. Inflation, apart from anything else, but if, if even if you have a, um, a, a an index weighted so that you take inflation figures out of it. Um, it does look like we're going to end up paying more for for energy because we're going to be looking for it in areas that are not as easily accessible as they are today. I mean, if you think about going out and drilling a hole in the ground and then extracting oil and burning it, that's relatively simple to do. If you think about all the technology, the R&D in, in either building a wind farm or or building a solar panel and then putting it out in the right place and then waiting for the conditions to be correct to generate the electricity that we want to use, it, it's never going to be as efficient as drilling a hole and burning stuff. So we are unfortunately going to pay more for our energy. But that isn't necessarily a bad thing because if we're a more prosperous society, we will be able to afford it more easily. Very interesting. Steve Irwin there uh, from Portland.